Rising. We have a spectacular show for you today. Thanks for starting off the week with us. Brianna Joy Gray, it is wonderful to see you on Monday. <laughs> You're extra nice to me on, on Mondays, Robbie. I'm not mad at it. <laughs> I appreciate you right I'm back. Trying to send, uh, reinforce some good, uh, some good decisions. You're yeah, you're making it a pleasurable experience. I might have to keep coming back around on Monday. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Well, tell us about the big news. Well, uh, tomorrow is the big day. President Biden is set to officially announce his 2024 re-election bid in a matter of hours. The Washington Post reports that party operatives are, quote, relatively optimistic about the president's chances at this point in the cycle. The Post writes, quote, the overriding concern for many Democrats is ensuring that former President Trump does not return to the White House, and some still see Biden as their best bet. However, new NBC News polling calls into question whether Biden will be able to defeat Trump a second time. Only 41 percent of respondents said they approve of the president's job performance thus far, and a whopping 70 percent that they don't want Biden to run for re-election. That includes 53 percent of former Biden voters. Among the no's, a majority blamed age. Biden is turning 81 years old this November. And while polling shows Trump still pulling ahead of competitors in the GOP primary field, it seems prospective voters aren't too pleased with the Don either. Recent AP University of Chicago's polling reveals 70 percent of voters and 44 percent of Republicans also do not want to see the embattled former president run for re-election. What's clear is a large swath of Americans don't want another Biden-Trump matchup, even though that's likely to be exactly what they get. Mm -hmm. Yahoo News YouGov polling finds amongst registered voters that 44 percent feel exhausted at the prospect of a rematch. <laughs> Just 16 percent say they're excited. And I, I can't blame them for feeling that way at all. It, it is exhausting, the idea that we could have another Biden-Trump matchup. That'll be three in a row for Trump, you know, first against one of the most unpopular candidates of all time, Hillary Clinton. Trump himself being a not particularly popular right. candidate outside of, yes, popular candidate outside of, of uh, the, the heavy yeah. MAGA base. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, Joe Biden, two, uh, it'll be his second time around here. Uh, I think, look, if I, you know, I'm trying to survey the mood of the country. Uh, Biden is very tolerated, I, w I would say. Obviously, he he has some kind of political acumen. He did very well. He, he won, and then he did very well in the midterms up against historical precedents. You would have expected a weaker performance. You know, you can talk about whether that was Dobbs, whether that was Trump's influence, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But clearly, people... Um, People don't loathe Biden the way no. they, they loathe some other and, and political figures, and that's his, his advantage. I do think it's important that age does seem to be driving a lot of the yeah. negativity that Biden is getting, and that's a very different kind of critique than a substantive one. You can say what you want about his age, and I don't think it's just age. It's a little bit, you know, is he also competent? Is his age affecting his um, cognitive abilities and things like that? But I would argue that you're in a much better place if people don't want you to run again simply because you're old than if they substantively disagree with you. And I think that Biden has done a good job, broadly speaking, just talking raw politics, real politics, and being normal, mm -hmm. appealing to normie voters, not really stepping in a lot of the culture war stuff, coming across as a credibly regular guy, especially in contrast to folks like Ron DeSantis, who keeps putting out these kind of bizarre sound bites as America gets to know him more outside of Florida. It's not clear that they're liking what they're seeing. Or Donald Trump, who has his own certain kind of appeal, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't say it's because he's like a regular guy. Well, Biden has the advantage of, uh, I mean, he does have primary challenges. I'm going to talk about that a little bit in a minute, but he's overwhelmingly likely to be renominated yeah. as the Democratic candidate, whereas Trump has to fight for it against DeSantis, maybe others. So uh, some of the messaging I think you're seeing from DeSantis, Trump on Coulter stuff, I don't know that that's a message they're going to lean into in the general yeah. election, but to win the Republican primary, you got to go to war with Disney, apparently, if you're Ron DeSantis. Yeah, that's but even, strategy. even outside of the Disney stuff, I'm not sure if you caught that clip. Ron DeSantis was asked about um, polls that show him disfavorably against Donald Trump. And he, he said, oh, uh, you know, I'm not even running yet, so why are you asking me this? But he said it in this weird kind of whiny, almost like little kiddish tone, and that was going viral, not because of the substance of what he said, but because his affect— 
doesn't seem to be landing with folks in the way that, you know, we were we were previewing some Trump clips before we started yeah. rolling today, and we both couldn't help but chuckle. He has this certain kind of absurdist, funny thing about him that makes you want to watch him, even if you object to his substantive politics. And, and by the way, Robbie, I think you're absolutely right to evoke 2016. Back in 2016, the Democratic Party decided it was their choice. It was her turn to mm -hmm. run a, a historically unfavorable candidate, having the hubris to think, well, anybody can beat Trump. Trump is a joke. They wanted Trump. They Hillary wanted Trump. preferred Trump. They Pied Piper Trump into existence, and now they have to live with the with what they wrought. And to be going heading into that again, Biden is unfavorable, disfavored for other kinds of reasons than Hillary Clinton. I'm not sure it's a, an exact one to one. No, I don't. But think to so play either. that kind of game, to play with fire and say we're going to put forward a candidate who we know folks don't want overwhelmingly, you know, majorities of, of Biden mm -hmm. voters don't want Biden again. And to know that another Trump campaign is coming down, it, 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 it suggests to me another a similar kind of hubris, which leads us to the next part of the story, yes. which is that according to a Washington Post report, the DNC has decided it will not hold any primary debates, this despite two official challengers, of course, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Marianne Williamson, who pull at roughly 14 and 5 percent, respectively. respectively. Uh, according to recent data, leftists like former Ohio State Senator Nina Turner are calling the decision undemocratic. I'm inclined to agree. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, what is he afraid of? Look, I, again, and with all respect to Marion Williamson, who's been a guest on our show, and we look forward to having RFK Jr. on our show as well sometime in the future. Uh, we've already reached out to his people. We're going to make that happen. Um, Biden is overwhelmingly likely to be, you know, I, I think even if you're a fan of Marianne or a fan of RFK Jr., you'd have to concede it's very likely he'll get the nomination again. So what is what is he worried about? What does he have to fear from, from, from engaging in the practice of democracy, sharing a stage with, with people who aren't polling like 1%, th those are some healthy numbers there. Yeah, I would argue that the numbers make it more obvious how mm -hmm. undemocratic the Democratic Party is being. But I think their bet is that voters are going to be less put off by the blatantly anti-democratic moves of the party than they would be Biden being exposed, not by Trump, but by people on the left hmm. who he who have more cred credibility on some of the areas in which he's lacking, including by, uh, the critics he's gotten from the anti-war movement. And to date, most of the high-profile anti-war vo voices have been on the right. And that has made it easier, I think, for a lot of liberals to ignore them, to write them off as silly or Putin puppets and things like that. But to have a Kennedy on a debate stage bringing up substantive concerns about how uh, about America's foreign policy i think could be in their eyes devastating to biden's general election chances and i also think they might have some concerns about one or both of these characters uh, one of the, one or both of these candidates doing a dirty break and that fundamentally they don't want to give them the platform to get national recognition if they are then going to turn around and run as an independent candidate. We spoke to Dave Weigel last week, who's a reporter for Semaphore. He was there for the RFK Jr. announcement speech. Um, if you didn't watch that video from us, go back and watch it. It was a really good interview. Uh, what Dave said that I thought was so interesting and insightful is that the crowd there for the RFK Jr. announcement, Dave said it was, and he's, he's a <laughs> veteran political reporter, said it was the most ideologically diverse mm -hmm. um, that he's ever seen. It was not just, there were a lot of right-wing Trump people there, but there were also a lot of people who'd voted for Biden and wouldn't do so again. Uh, a lot of people who didn't don't like Trump or Biden. It was, a, it was a mixed crowd of people who are attracted to RFK Jr. Maybe they're attracted to the name, or that's what first drew them to him. They're attracted to uh, the very stridently different course he has articulated on uh, COVID uh, mitigation. And then also, as you said, uh, um, uh, Ukraine and, and war. And he said, yeah. he said in, in an interview or in that speech, he said, look, I, 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 Trump's been criticized a lot. I agree with some of those criticism. I don't agree with others. Right. And then he talked about where he would be different from, yeah. uh, from Biden. And on environmental issues. So sure. much of the bullying 
to vote for Biden in 2020 was the the, the world is going to end, climate crisis. I, just hold your nose and vote for him. Noam Chomsky was saying this. He said it to me on my show. We had a long debate about it. If only for the environment, you have to vote for Biden. We're seconds left on the doomsday clock with respect <laughs> to the environment. And then he goes and does things like open up drilling with ConocoPhillips in Alaska. And uh, RFK Jr. spent his entire career being an environmental lawyer. So there are some real substantive criticisms that Biden would have to face if there were a debate. The mm. question is, is there going to be enough public pressure from Democrats who want to really be able to vet the options instead of having a coordination within the own, own if party? Their numbers go up, if their numbers go up, if they're the support that uh, for Marianne and RFK Jr., um, maybe he gets shamed into having to do it. Um, at least even the, the refusal to do it will look even more anti-democratic, um, anti-democratic self-serving yeah. and pathetic if yeah. he still puts them off at that point. So we'll Keep watching for that. I have my radar coming up next. Stay with us.